Hey, good morning, everybody. Welcome back to the channel. Today, we're gonna try something a little bit different. I've been doing a lot of concept and development for my book, the Frank and Beans book, but this morning, we're gonna try something a little bit different. So, you guys know that I do a lot of animals. Um, this is a great reference book. I'm not promoting this book, but um, this is called the Visual Dictionary uh, to Animals, and it gives you a broad spectrum of different types of animals from fish to insects to bears. I mean, it's a great visual reference. It's got tons of really great realistic looking artwork. Um, it gives their scientific names and it's just really great uh, reference if you guys are interested in doing uh, animals. But what I know <clears throat> is a lot of guys and gals, especially in the illustration world, um, and myself uh, included in that, uh, love to draw animals in kind of a cartoony way. And, and whenever I first started out doing this, I really didn't know how to come about doing it. And it took a long time for me to really find my way, um, you know, uh, just delving into the different anatomy of the different types of uh, animals. We're gonna work on a bird today, specifically this toucan, because I love, I love toucans. I love their really large, um, bills, uh, beaks, whatever you want to call it. Um, so what we're going to do is we're just going to, we're going to delve into this. You guys see my reference here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to attempt to draw this in a, uh, kind of a cartoony type of way. So <clears throat> you guys saw the reference. You saw basically, um, you know, the silhouette. Make sure that I get you guys in frame here because I don't want to mess this up. Last couple times I've done this, I've messed it up. Um, you know, the silhouette. So what I basically do is whenever I start doing uh, a drawing like this, I really start thinking of, for me, the character of exactly what I want, the, you know, the character of the bird to be. Um, right now, make sure that I'm in frame. Yeah, I am. The quality isn't that good though. I'm not very happy about that. Let me see if I can adjust you up a little bit. I don't know why it did that. Okay, no, we're fine. <clears throat> okay. Um, you know, I'm thinking about the gesture. I'm thinking about a lot of things. But since I've got my reference in front of me, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to do a really rough gesture drawing of, uh, of this particular animal. Exactly how I think this toucan kind of feels this morning. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you a side-by-side -side comparison of my drawing with the reference to kind of show you where I pushed and pulled and exaggerated to really bring out that cartoony nature. <laughs> I don't even know if that's a word. The cartoony nature. Um, so whenever I'm doing, again, whenever I'm doing stuff like this, I'm, I'm always thinking about how I can simplify the, um, the character because if this was being designed for games or for animation, what you do have to do as a character designer is you have to do something that's animatable. What does that mean? Well, in traditional animation, it has to be able to be drawn many, many times over and over again um, in such a way that it isn't gonna you know, take a ton of time, the animators aren't gonna take a ton of time to complete the task, if that makes sense. So it has to be not oversimplified, but it has to be simplified and easier to draw, if that makes sense. So when I'm going through this, I'm thinking, what is the most discernible tr character trait of the toucan? Obviously, it's, it's this large space right here. Um, and now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start getting into the minutia and the, and the nuances of 
the you know the body type here. A little shadow underneath the bill here. He's got this beautiful yellow feather patch that comes underneath. And if you notice, I've, I've, I've really generalized everything. So I've got, you know, I've got my circle here. I've got my bean shape here that really, you know, gives that, you can see that line of action there, right here. And you've got this counterweight that comes around because he's got this enormous bill that's, that's pulling, you know, it's pulling down and all that pressure is, you know, he's, he's got his, his back arched just a little bit to hold up this weight. And then I've got this counter shape down here. Now, even though this counter shape down here doesn't really have any, in the real world, have any weight um, to offset this balance, these muscles right here will help really balance this out. So I've got this wing that comes up here. And the other wing comes here, and you get this foot that comes here, and he's got this nice bushy area here, and then you got the feet. Here. Sorry about the noise in the background. I threw some laundry in before. I started this video, real world, real world video here. Now, whenever I do character designs, what I would do is I would do a general, hold on, let me get this eyeball in. He's kind of got a relaxed tone to him here. His eyelid comes up and around, and then he's got this area below. I'm gonna switch pencils. This area below here. And this area right, we're gonna do this. We're gonna go here. around and then he's gonna nice dark pupil right in there and since in animation and games and all those other types of uh, artistic expression you know, the eyes will be kind of the windows of the soul. They're a little bit bigger. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna look, I'm gonna step back for a second, I'm gonna look at this. I like the way this is going. I'm gonna come around here. I'm gonna, I'm gonna branch this out just a little bit. And then, of course, coming around. And how you get this nice gestural line right here is I'm not using my wrist. You know, I very, very seldom, except whenever I, you know, get in here, and even then, I've locked my wrist, and I'm, I'm still getting, I'm still getting this gestural rhythm and flow that really, in my opinion, is something that, you know, it speaks to me so much whenever I draw. I just love, I love that feeling of. You got a branch or a leaf coming up here. Comes down, you got some other leaves that have maybe a little branch come up here. You know, so I'm gonna define now I'm gonna go back in and I'm gonna define some of these uh, little details that kinda bring out now I'm not gonna go in and render the bird. I'm not interested in rendering the bird. Okay, especially um, since this is just a really quick concept sketch. I'm interested now in, in defining those important areas. You know, he's 
got these little beak areas that come around. And he's got this another another color that comes up like this. Yeah. So I'll give a little bit of shadows here and there. Um, and then I'll just start, I'll start putting in some of this tone. I'll bring this, it's hidden behind that branch right there. Comes around. And from here, what I would probably do is I would do a multiply layer if I was working digitally. And I would go back in and I would just start really pushing and pulling this pose a little bit. See right now, I like, I like this, but I need more, I need more of this. So he's kind of got that balance coming around. Even that small turn at the bottom there really helps define that gesture. You want that rhythm and flow. You want that really nice uh, movement. You don't want to seem so stiff. I see a lot of drawings online and a lot of people ask me um, in terms of how do you get you know, a nice rhythm and flow. And I say, well, don't lock your wrist. You know, cartooning animals is something that I really love to do. And it's kind of, it, it really is a balance because you don't want to go too far in one direction and you don't want to go too far in the other direction where you can't determine what the heck it is, you know? Now what I'll do is I'll just come back in and I'll put, um, you know, maybe I'll put some shadows here. It comes down, you know, shadow here. And if I was working in a different medium besides color pencil, because color pencil will actually gum up if I were to take my Copic, my Copic markers and I were to start coloring in, especially on this newsprint, it would gum up my marker and I don't want to do that. So this is, again, was just a, a really rough, um, a rough drawing this morning. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna, I'm gonna color these in a little bit darker using my color pencil. You know, maybe the light is shining here, here. So I've got this, I've got this nice cast shadow that comes like this. And it comes around because, again, I'm thinking three-dimensionally all the time. You know, you've got this form that comes out and it juts out because this is the very front part of his chest. So I'm going to have a little bit of a shadow here. Right? <clears throat> and then maybe I've got what it is. See, and, and now what I'm doing, since I've established my silhouette, I've established a ground plane, I've established kind of a perspective, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to start thinking about overall composition. Even if I'm not going to finish this to go to finish, I'm still thinking of that. So I'll just put, you know, here. Here. things a little bit darker here. Maybe he's got something dark there. This will be darker because it's in the foreground. You know, he's got something here. He got this nice shadow right here. So that was cartooning a toucan. So now we're gonna look at the reference. Okay. So you see that I pushed the beak out much more and in that classic style, the toucan. I wanted it to be uh, one of the main points. So then of course, you know, these shapes are really easy to define. You've got your circle here. You got your bean shape here, okay? And then I've got this nice beak circle. And I've got this nice here to balance this beak. You know, and that line of action is right there. 
So, you know, I do all that even before I start my drawing. I look at the reference. They tell you don't be a slave to the reference, and that's definitely true. And I wasn't. You know, and in this instance, the next thing I would do is maybe I would do a small study over here. You know, maybe he's... got his mouth open, you know, and he's talking, he's got his wide eyes like this, see and since I've already drawn him once now and he's got his hand that comes around and he's like, what are you doing, you know, and he's standing here and maybe this foot is up right here, and since he's mad, his feathers are gonna be spread out like this. You know, and here's the branch right here. He's like, what are you doing over there? Get off my lawn. You know, in there, and then I would go on the next one. So I encourage you guys, do this. Do this a lot. This is how you build up that visual library in your brain to really establish how you're gonna do cartoon animals. You know, there's so many different references in the world and different ways of doing things. You know, you watch my videos and, and you know, I get a lot of comments. Um, thank you for showing me how to do this. Thank you for showing me how to do that. At the end of the day, I can show you a pathway, but you're gonna find your own way to do it. You know, um, I, I always talk about Aaron Blaze because he's really been an inspiration for me, um, whether he knows it or not. I'm sure he doesn't know who I am. But he's great because he really dives, you know, delves into the, to the ins and out and the anatomy of, of the animals. And he's encouraging. And that's very important. I encourage you guys to really just draw something every day. Get a picture of something. Get a picture of something. Interpret it. Do it ten different ways. Try something different. Try different uh, media, and you know, just really medium, paint, sketch, draw, do it digitally, and enjoy life. You know, there's so many different terrible things happening in the world right now. And I tend not to watch the news. We got rid of terrestrial TV probably about 10 years ago, so I don't keep up on the news that much. Um, you know, politics. I'm not really into that um, per se. But man, I heard about some bad things happening in Texas, and honestly. It is a horrible thing. Um, you know, people make choices, you know. Certain standards have been removed uh, in the world uh, and in the United States and in the homes and stuff like that, and that's a terrible thing. But your job as an artist is to always put something good back into the world. I encourage you guys, thank you for watching uh, my channel. Thank you for visiting today. If this is your first time, I have tons of videos on here. I'm gonna be going into a little bit more of this because I think this is more um, of what I need to really give you guys. Instead of just doing a warm up, I like doing stuff like this. So um, anyway, thank you guys for coming and we'll here, I'm gonna, go, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna go down a little bit so you can see that the whole thing in and of itself. Yeah. So, there we go. That is my toucan. Remember when I was growing up, I used to eat, oh, what was the name of that cereal? Was it Fruit Loops? Fruit Loops with the toucan? Oh, I used to love Fruit Loops. I'm a little bit older now, I can't eat Fruit Loops because my stomach will explode. <laughs> but anyway, thank you guys, and we'll definitely see you next time.